these things together, I, I take my saddle and I put it in my pack. Also, I have a pack that accepts my bow. So my bow is attached to my pack. Now my climbing method is my um, carbon fiber kiwi climber tree gaffs. And those just sit on my pouch. I just uh, take one of those large gear ties and uh, attach it to the, the back uh, saddlebags. And then I have my pack on with all my extra clothing, my um, calls, binoculars, uh, and the actual saddle or tree stand you can put right in your pack. And then with this uh, electric fat tire high bike, I can get, you know, I, I go regularly four or five miles back in the, in, off these uh, logging roads, and a lot of them are gated, so four-wheelers can't get on them. And uh, nobody's walking on foot that far. So I, I get to hunt a lot of uh, unpressured deer. Um, so it works really good when you put it all together. Um, I got a nice light on the bike, and it has uh, some fenders so it doesn't kick up the mud and stuff. As I'm riding back on these muddy trails, um, it has four different settings. I've done a video on this in the past um, mm -hmm. to assist you and uh, you do not break a sweat going into your tree at all. It's, uh, you can climb some very steep terrain and it's like riding um, damn near downhill if you have it on the, the highest set. quite capable on the, the battery. Um, so the whole thing with the, with the bike and the saddle and the tree gas, they go together really well to, to hunt wherever I wanted to hunt and die. Uh, um, I don't have very much weight or bulk. It's almost like you're you're walking in to, to scout for deer. You know, you don't have a tree stand sitting on your back or tree sticks sitting on your back, you know. You're not lugging all this stuff in. And I can go farther back than anybody on foot and it's super quiet. This bike does not scare deer at all. I've ridden right past deer and they just sit there and look at me. It's, it's crazy. It leaves no scent. Um, and uh, it's very quiet when, when you're riding. No more uh, loud than a regular bike. Right, now what I want to show you guys is this um, new way of climbing the tree that I got. And these, these are uh, carbon fiber uh, tree gas. And these are made by Kiwi Climber. Um, they're not cheap, but they are extremely light. So this is one of the uh, tree gaffs, and uh, I intend to camouflage this next season. But uh, anyway, it takes a little getting used to of which side to put them on, so I've written on here till I get used to it. Now I've had to modify these because when they come, they're for tree service people, so they have these large straps are Velcro. They go all the way around in Velcro, and then on the foot part, there's another Velcro strap. Well, when this guy sent these to me, and it took quite a while to get, I think uh, it was like four months or something, so these are kind of in high demand right now, um, he uh, sent me two of the same shin cup, so he had to send me the left one instead of two rights. So in doing that, he also, I told him that I'm hunting with these, and there is a big interest in, in uh, these for hunting, so he's going to come up with a quiet method of attaching these um, to your leg. He has not yet though. So he was nice enough to send me a buckle strap for the bottom. Now this, I came up with myself and went to a sewing place, told them what I wanted. Uh, I bought a buckle and some, uh, what is this, two inch webbing strap. And I made this system, which has been working pretty well. So what you do to attach these, when you get to your tree, you take this strap, which I've taken off most of the Velcro. There's just a little bit that keeps clinging. Um, hopefully that'll wear off. But anyway, this wraps around, and this is fixed, this buckle. And then you come around with this adjustable buckle, and you just clip it in. And you really don't have to tighten it. This part doesn't have to be super tight, as long as it's snug. Now this part is the part that you want really tight, is around your foot. So this buckle, you wrap around. And 
buckle yourself in. And that's it. Now these weigh a little over a pound a piece, I believe. They're very light, very light. Once I get to the tree, I put both my gaffs on. I take my pack off, take my bow off, set it on the tree, put my pack back on, and then I take my gear hoist and I attach it to my bow. Attach my lineman's belt and I start climbing to, to uh, hunting height. Now this just plays out on the hoist, the bow hoist, and then uh, you can easily pull your bow up. It works really good and it's worth the extra weight and bulk to me. Now I'll show you how well these uh, tree gaffs work getting up the tree. First you want to attach your lineman's belt. Adjust it. So you have a little room to gaff in at it, like a 45. Now you can do it as fast as you want, or you're going to want to do it quiet too. So once I get up to hunting height, I can work two-handed on my platform and set my platform. And then I climb up to my platform, tighten my lineman's belt, set my tether, and clip in. Take my belt off, and then I can take each gaff off, and I hang it off the side of my pack on the far side. And coming down, after I've put my gaffs back on, attach my lineman's belt first, then detach the tether. I can step off the platform, descend, grab the platform, and then go all the way down the tree. So it's very fast. You can be as quiet as you want to. Depending on the bark of the tree, you don't want to climb really loud bark trees that flake off and stuff. Now, with the saddle and the climbing spurs, I mean, you have to be in shape, you know, a little bit. Um, it's not, it's harder than just climbing tree sticks, but uh, it's, it's, safe. I've never had a, a problem yet. I've gaffed out a couple times and that means that the gaff punches out and that's because I was putting it too much of an angle. You should be more of a 45 when you gaff into the tree. And again, you have to practice this. Um, you want to, you know, kick into the tree a little bit. You can't just walk down, um, at least in, in my experience. Um, so it does take practice with the gaffs for sure, and with the saddle. But, but together it's awesome because everything, my, my pack is on my back with all my extra clothes, my, my calls, my binoculars, and my saddle is in my pack, um, which is my tree stand and my safety harness. So if you're bringing a safety harness anyway, 
that cancels those two out. So really, you're not carrying a tree stand in at all. Um, and then I have my pack again is on, on my back and I just have my tree gaffs that are attached to my bike that I hold in my hand and go to my tree stand, which weigh a little over two pounds. So it's just an awesome way to get anywhere you want quietly and uh, hunt pretty much almost any tree. Um, you can hunt very small trees with this, um, way smaller than you would hunt with a tree stand. And, uh, and you, you don't, nothing's holding you back. So you're not worried about, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh God, I gotta haul that tree stand out, you know, and set it all up, it's a real pain. Once you get used to this, it's very easy. And uh, you can go back so much farther in the woods to hunt those unpressured deer. The other thing I wanted to show you was um, the way I attach my bow and pack to the tree. I used to use the, the screw-in bow holder that turns on a 90, and then I'd screw a smaller screw-in um, hook for my pack. And that stuff works good. It's great to have your bow right out there. Um, with this system, you don't, with the saddle, you don't need that, that bow holder sticking away from the tree because you're not sitting against the tree having to put the bow in front of you. The bowl can be right next to the tree and that's where this comes in. And all this is, is a one inch webbing strap, um, or actually two of them sewed together like every three inches. It's just a piece of strapping, webbing. And every three inches or so, it's sewed together with another one. So all it does is make a bunch of loops. You can see that. So what you do is just wrap it around the tree, and this is great for anybody. Grab this last webbing, pass it through, get it to whatever height you want, and let that dangle. Now, what I do is my pack has a small carabiner on the top and I just clip it to whatever webbing piece I want to adjust the height. And then I can move it away from me around the tree. Not only does it block some of my movement from where the deer are coming from, it's also everything's close at hand. And it doesn't interfere with going around the tree as long as you put it on your, the side. I'm right-handed, so I put my pack on this side because if the deer are over here, I wrap around the tree to shoot them over here or I bring the bow around and shoot like this and when they're over here I don't really have to move around the tree at all to get any of these shots so the pack being here doesn't interfere and the other part of it to hang your bow is this hero clip and it's just a clip with a little hook okay and that's adjustable and this can pivot and then this can fold all the way around onto itself and what I've done is I've taken a little cloth tape and uh, I've wrapped that around there to quiet it down. And then I clip this in one of the webbing pieces on the other side of the tree. So before my pack weights this hole all down and pulls it tight, I clip this in. And now the weight of my pack, you know, cinches this down where this doesn't go anywhere once I hang my bow on it. And this hangs right in between both my limbs. Or you can hang it on your cam, you know, the hole in your cam. But that holds your bow, and this weighs hardly anything, and it takes up very little space. It's quick to um, deploy, put on the tree, um, and you don't have to, that extra grinding into the tree and getting yourself all sweated up and stuff in the tree. Now it's, my hands are black is because I've, I cover this in uh, activated charcoal to get rid of any scent. And usually I handle all my stuff with gloves that have activated charcoal that I dump on them. And I wipe everything down with those same gloves. But I'm not doing that right now. So anyway, that's why this is all black and stuff is because I, I put it in a bag of activated charcoal and shake it up. But anyway, this works great with, with everything too. 
and this fits right in your pack and doesn't weigh anything. What I would say the only negative to all this is that you have to be kind of in shape to do this, especially with the, the tree gaffs. Um, the, the most difficult part about the whole entire thing is when I'm in my tree and I have to put my gaffs back on. That's kind of a pain. I'm not the most uh, flexible person, so I gotta get my knee up and cinch that strap down. Now, next year I'll probably come up with something other than that buckle. I might come up with a, uh, a buckle, like a snap buckle in, um, way to tighten them up. And uh, that'll save a lot of time and, and effort. Because cinching down that, that one uh, belt type buckle is, is kind of a pain. But uh, I'll change that next year. Um, but as far as um, climbing up the tree with gaffs, you do need to be um, somewhat in shape, I would say. And uh, the saddle itself, as long as you can climb a pair of sticks, then if you wanna use sticks, then that doesn't take any more or less, uh, you know, um, you don't have to be in sh good shape to use a saddle. And I've seen some bigger guys using them too. And they come in all different sizes and you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, anything breaking this stuff, very well made. Um, they overdo everything. So, yeah, that's the whole system.